Well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> this is uh, Resurrection Weekend. It's Saturday, the 3rd of April. I'm standing here in Texas, where I was at in Canada just uh, less than uh, about five days ago. But uh, I want to bless. I want to bless everyone and and uh, just say a little bit of a prayer this morning before I do a, something a little different. Father, thank you for this wonderful weekend that we celebrate your sacrifice and your victory over evil, over flesh. Father, thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross and for resurrecting him, so we have victory that can never be taken from anyone that believes in Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is just ask God to forgive you, admit that you have made mistakes, <laughs> and that's what it means to say that you're a sinner, which we all are, and ask the Lord to come in and be your Lord and Savior, and ask Him to empower you with the gift of of the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, he will. So God bless everyone. But uh, this video is going to be a little different. It's not about my preaching. I own a um, 1987 359 Peterbilt. And so many people ask questions online, but I have not seen any videos, and I did not take any videos um, while I was just taking it apart. <clears throat> but this is all about changing from a high, a low flow system, which is, if you got a system like this, your tank looks like this here, and all the lines come off the top. This is a low flow system, and anybody that has a big cam 4, uh, Late 80s, early 90s has a low flow system. And I believe the 444s were also a low flow. And the parts are very hard to come by. So, to switch it over. And if you can't find a deal like I did through a Christian brother, a brother in Christ, um, that has a junkyard full of old trucks, um, you're going to be paying a lot to switch it. But it's worth, worth it. See, the low flow runs about 7 PSI, and this is the new radiator, which I've got a new core coming from, <laughs> uh, and it'll run about um, 17 PSI, but uh, here, let me explain. <laughs> See, a high flow system, it has the suction side off the top of the motor and the radiator, and the supply side's at the bottom. So the, the coolant goes in at the top and pushes out through the bottom, and it's so much more efficient. Um, it's more dependable. The low flow system, everything goes in at the top, and then it goes up and down the radiator and comes out at the top as well. And it does all that through these one-inch lines. You see the difference in volume? Here's a two-and-a-half-inch line, a two-and-a-half-inch line versus... Two one-inch lines for the out and one one-inch line for the in. So you can see where it just doesn't have the volume. But with that being said, you have to get a new aftercooler. And you'll know the aftercooler when I show it here in a minute. But uh, I'm sorry, I've got the motor tarped and uh, I can undo it real quick. But you take the aftercooler off. <coughs> where the rags are. <coughs> I just did that because it was supposed to rain today. And it was dusty yesterday and the day before. But let me go around here. You got to... <coughs> to this... Uh, of course, you got to change the radiator. as makes sense. But you got to take everything off. <coughs> got to take the water pump off. Got to take the, fan sh the clutch fan off. You have to take thermostat housing off, of course, and I'm also switching the oil cooler because I have this single filter style, which was very popular on the low flow, and I'm not for sure why, but I am going to uh, the one that has a 777 and a 670 filter. It's the double filter. The one, of course, is a half filter, but then you got to take off the water manifold. Let's see if I can get over here in just one second. All right, well, this is the old water manifold. 
it's still it's unbolted but i still got it sitting up there because of that sensors there's some sensors up there that are very hard to find um and very expensive when you do so but anyways these are all hooked together with o-rings and everything just kind of squeeze fits in but make sure you use permatex when you put it back together but all the water manifold is loose and i've even got some back here off and uh Right in here, where the where the water manifold goes down and the water jet goes down in there, there are there are some little washers that are rubber coated, and they're a restrictor. Just like if you uh, know NASCAR, they ran restrictor plate races back in the day, and uh, they uh, they restrict the flow of coolant to help bring the pressure up. And uh, you cannot use those when you put it back together. Most kits, the O-ring kits, you'll get, go and get you some uh, exhaust manifold uh, gaskets. You can find them. Uh, you'll just have to look for them. But anyways, just match them up to the bottom and you'll see the difference. Um, but, uh, of course, here's the, the fan. It's, it's still on the mount, but... Be careful, those things are expensive as well. But here's the old thermostat housing for the low flow system. See, you got the two lines here. There's no bottom line. The old water pump. Um, but with that being said, it's taken me one full day to tear this down. And uh, I will walk in and I'll show you the old parts that I've got took out. Some of them and the new parts that will replace them. Thank you for watching. I'll be right back. Of course, uh, we have to take the fan shroud off and excuse the mess in here. But here are the, uh, this is the new after cooler. And you'll know it's different because a low flow does not but a high flow system the uh inlet is in this dead center and it has this uh shape here you can see how this works but and of course you got the new thermostat housing which i got to get those all cleaned up the new water manifold <laughs> and this is the where I was telling that you got to find the gasket that goes around here because you cannot use the restrictor here. And this is the what you're seeing here is uh, what you're seeing here is the uh, the connecting tube. For the uh, after cooler that hooks to the top of the turbo and over to the top of the after cooler. Of course, this is the top pipe off the radiator. Now, I want to tell you something here and show you something. This is the supply side on the after cooler. Supply side is at the back, of course. The uh, <clears throat> This goes off the front, which goes back to the um, thermostat. And everything's just held together with O-rings. Make sure that you use uh, Permtex on everything. Okay. Well, you can see the difference. Here's the old after cooler. And uh, this is the bottom. But it's a, tri it's a, a wedge shape, I guess you would describe it as. And you can see all, oops, let's see if I can stand this up. It's a lot heavier than the other one, but it's got three, three and uh, two water inlets. And then it's got the turbo inlet. And this, all this stuff will be for sale. Um, if anybody's wanting to repair their low flow, but this is the, the, the tube for the, um, for the uh, turbo to the after cooler now there are some pieces that you'll have to have this comes off the thermostat housing 
this as well. But this little piece here, you'll know, you'll recognize it. You need this bracket because this bracket bolts to the back of the engine. And uh, I will show you, walk over here and it, this hooks to the back of the, the uh, after cooler like such. You put it back here behind the motor, it hooks to the back of the after cooler and then this bolts on to the uh, back of the motor to hold it in place. And, um, you will also need this piece, which is uh, your fill, your supply tube, and it goes on under the thermostat, and it, uh, this actually is right in front of your oil cooler where it mounts. This is the old piece of the water manifold. As you can see, it's totally different. It only uses one bolt to secure it, which the new, the retrofit takes two. And here's the oil cooler that I'm switching to. All right, I found the piece I was looking for. This is the piece that would normally go in the back of the block. It's a two-piece setup. You take these three, uh, whoops, sorry, it's blurry. Um, this is a two-piece setup. It splits right there, these three bolts. Take the, the fitting off. And this actually goes in, and you can see it's just a half-inch flow. Let's see? So... Well, since I can't get that plug out of the back of the motor, let's walk around to the other side of my truck. And if you are looking at buying one of these older trucks, either buy one that's got high flow, or before you, as soon as you buy it, look for the low, uh, the high flow uh, conversion stuff. And this is where that, that supply tube, what I was telling you before, it comes down and it runs along this right here, and it comes out right in front of this, right in front of this filter here. Is where the supply gets, uh, the, the supply side for the, the bottom hose for the radiator. Okay. So, I can't get that plug out, which is right there. You can see the round spot right there. Um, right uh, where that uh, heater, uh, the block heater wire runs. But it's right there on the back of the block. I can't get it out because someone has rounded it out. So, what I'm going to do is... See, this is the same water jacket. This is actually where my heater core comes out of. I'm going to hook in and run the supply off of it. So, um, if you don't, if your motor's in your truck and you don't want to, don't want to mess with trying to reach around and get that thing out of there, then that is an option. And uh, I suggest if you buy one of these old trucks that uh, that you consider buying manuals off of eBay or somewhere because there's a lot of shops that won't work on these old trucks. And yeah, they're, it's fun learning out how to, how to do things on it. I mean, I've always been a person that didn't mind working on my equipment. So if you don't like working on your equipment, don't buy an old truck. Don't buy any truck at all, actually. Um, but that's in the nutshell what you got to do. You got you to replace the radiator. And if you buy one out of the junkyard like I did, um, I didn't take the time to test it. But it has some of the rows are smashed and pinched pretty bad. So I bought it for the tanks. You can buy a brand new radiator um, through someone like General Radiator or whatever. Um... But I bought one for the tanks because I want. I just bought because it came up a little bit cheaper for me. I bought the I bought the radiator and I'm going to tear it apart. And it's just a bolt together metal radiator, and uh, they're real easy to rebuild. Yeah, because the core um, with this older style, don't be tempted. Oops, don't be tempted to to buy a uh, a four row radiator. It does help with the cooling, but it also got to know that it lessens the, the pressure that your system works under. I have an 07 with the C15A cert. I put a four row radiator in it because it was, I constantly run where it's 110 degrees or better Fahrenheit, 45, 46 degrees Celsius. 
and I put a four row radiator in it, but it dropped my PSI on my water pump, my water pressure from 17 to about 10, 11. Um, that, it's not bad. It's just that it has more rows, so it doesn't pressure up as hard. Um, so uh, just be aware of that. Um, these older water pumps, I don't know if they would drop the pressure way too low going to a four row or not. Um, but with that being said, I walked back over here to show one last thing before I stop the video about the work. I suggest that you buy some really good clean off tools. And this, they're not a sponsor, just like General Radiator. No one sponsors me. But I will tell you that my wife works for this place that makes automotive and barbecue grill brushes and clean-off tools. They're made in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, which is where I'm not at, but my wife's there. But the place is called Felton, Felton Brushes. And uh, if you want some good quality brushes, they're a little expensive, but it's well worth the money. I've got them. I'm going to take and put the ones that work on a drill. I'm going to clear all this off, scrub off all the paint that I and the rust I can get off, and clean up all where the gaskets were. I'm going to primer it and repaint everything. And I got to flush out and I got to disassemble this because this water manifold has these uh, nipple 